Hi, I'm Kevin Hauser. Um, this is a video number five in our video series uh, to promote the new book, uh, The Unauthorized Ubiquity Radio and Access Point Handbook, which is available on Amazon and hopefully soon on a PDF electronic version as well. For this particular video, this is going to be a little bit different. This entire video is going to be dedicated to just troubleshooting, okay? And, and I'm only going to talk about one troubleshooting problem. And I, I want to think that this is the most common problem that over the last, I don't know, five years, six years, that students have had. Okay, and the problem is my Unify Access Point uh, goes offline. My Unify Access Point shows disconnected. My Unify Access Point is not serving clients. Or it goes between disconnected to reconnected. So we're, we're going to look at some of those things today in this video. Um, I know, I can guarantee that that no matter how many little pointers I'm going to uh, go through here, that it may not help everyone out there. But let's let's stick with the basics. That's what we're going to do. We're going to stick with the basics. We're going to walk through some things that, that may be the problem and might, might help you um, determine, hey, you know, why is this, why is this happening? Okay, so let's, let's look at some, some stuff. Okay, well, one of the first things that I want to address right off the bat is, am I really having a problem? All right, so one of the things that we can look at in Unify is if we go down here to the, uh, I've opened up my controller, and um, what version of controller do I have here? Let's see, 6.0.43. Okay, so this is a relatively new version of the controller. Um, for my, this is running on a cloud key, by the way. Okay, so step number one. I'm going to open up the cloud key here. And um, here in my cloud key, right, I can see uh, some information here, what firmware version my cloud key has, um, which is late, it, it is the latest version for this cloud key. But I want to go to the settings menu. And right here in the settings menu is where some people make mistakes. Right, and I don't mean a huge mistake. They just don't set the time zone on this device. Right, so if you're using a controller, in this case, I'm using the cloud key. Make sure that you have the time zone correct uh, set correctly. Right, make sure that you've done that ahead of time, because time can cause problems when it talk when we talk about devices. So let's just get this one out of the way first. Let's make sure that that we have time set up correctly. All right. That being said, let's go back into the controller here. All right, so. Oop, let me go back into the Unify network. All right, so another thing I want you to look at is under notification on the left-hand side here. Click on a notification. Um, you'll notice that there's events here. If you open up the AP event, you can see that there is a, an avert, aler, event alert email and push here. And if we look at AP disconnected down here, there we go, AP disconnected right there, right? You can see that for AP Disconnected, we have event, alert, email, and push. All of these are selected, meaning that you will be notified should this AP become disconnected. Now, these are all set to default right now. If we go down and look at AP Reconnected, all right, there we go, AP Connected. Okay, so if we go down and look at AP Connected, we can see that's only an event. It's not an alert. It's not an email. It's not a push. So you may have gotten uh, an alert, a notification, an email that said, hey, my AP is disconnected, but you never got one that was reconnected. All right, so this may have been a temporary little network glitch. It could have been something simple that constantly reports the AP is being disconnected. Right? Okay, so the first step really is kind of silly. Is it really disconnected? Right? Is it has it stayed disconnected for a long time? So that that's kind of what I want to show you here. That again in the notification area, the reconnected is not really doesn't seem to be as high level of importance to ubiquity as disconnected. And I, I think it should be. So if it was me, I'd probably want to, you know, go ahead and select that. That, hey, I want this to be, you know, let me know that uh, it's back in business again. All right, so that being said, let's go on to the next portion. All right, so I've sort of divided this up. The, the title here, and my AP is disconnecting at random. So we're going to divide this up in two categories. Category one, the AP shows disconnected, but my clients can still authenticate. Now, 
if there's an access point in the Ubiquity world um, and it's serving clients, it doesn't necessarily have to talk to the controller all the time for this actual process to work. The only time it really needs to have the controller available is if you have guest control, if you have a portal, if you have restricted subnets, things like that. But when you just set up a vanilla network, the AP does not need to talk to a controller for it to actually function. So we want to find out, are my clients affected? Or is, or, or, or are they? That's the first thing we actually want to find out, right? So if the clients are still connected to the internet or the, the local network, the controller might just be sporadically unreachable. All right, I've seen this happen before. If the controller is on a local network, let's find out. Let's look at layers, layer one stuff. Let's look at cables and switches and see if that port is actually working. Let's find out if that PoE on that device is actually working. So look for basic things first. I know this sounds silly, but if you forget this step, it could be it could it could cause you nothing but headaches. I actually have done this to myself. I actually had the wrong cable or the wrong type of power cord plugged into a, a USG. Um, funny thing, that power cord fit just fine, but that power cord was for an edge router X, which required only half an amp of power, and the USG required more. The USG would boot and run for a little bit, and then restart again. And it, I, I thought for sure I had a bad USG, but in fact, I just had the wrong cable. So that's the first thing I look at. Let's look at layer one. Is the controller local? Let's look at, let's look at that. Now, if the controller's online or it's on another network, maybe you have too much traffic going from your network to that network, like if this controller is hosted in the cloud, right? That could be a problem. Any kind of delay between the access point and the controller may result in that, con in, in that uh, access point showing disconnected when in fact it's just waiting to be reconnected. So, Again, at the bottom of, of the, the page here, we see check the time settings, check the time zone settings. <clears throat> Do you have an NTP server <clears throat> that is set up correctly? Is it a valid NTP server? So time is a critical element inside anything um, that has to do with ubiquity, access points, okay? So that's important to understand. If the controller is online, just see if, if you can reach it, look at the latency numbers, things like that. If the AP is disconnected, Let's look at the IP settings for that device, especially DNS. Now, I've seen lots of online forum talk about DNS problems. Okay, so if the host, if the controller is hosted in the cloud, how how are we identifying it through DNS? This isn't this is an important feature, right? Again, and I did mention check for latency, check for connectivity. You know, test it. If the users are affected, again, we're going to go back to layer one. We're going to look at how is this AP actually being powered? Let's think about the cable length. Again, there are standards for cables. Now, if you are if you have an injector powering this access point, it would actually be better if the injector was closer to the access point than closer to the switch. Also check, like I said, for the health of this particular cable. Has it been mushed? Has it been run over? Has it been twisted back on itself? Basic layer one networking problems. We're going to try to narrow the focus here. Now, anytime I go out onto a site and they're having some kind of problem, I want to say, well, what's new? What's changed? Has there anything been changed? What's new? Did you put up shelving? Did you run new cable? Did you install new microwave ovens? I want to see what's changed. Then I want to narrow this down even further. Is this happening to a lot of access points or is it just one? When was the last time the firmware was updated on this access point? When's the last time the firmware was updated on the controller? Are the firmware versions consistent across the land? These are things, again, these are generalities, but you, you have to stop and look at them. You can't skip these steps. Now, another thing is, if you suspect that there is a layer one issue, power or a bad cable, replace that, take care of that, and then wait and look and see if this has solved your problem. You don't want to make too many changes at one time. Then you may never realize what was the problem in the first place or what was the cause of my problem in the first place. So again, this is this is typical ment mentality of a troubleshooter. Fix one thing, test it, fix the next thing. As we move on, 
we're going to remove unneeded elements. So we're going to go into the controller and say, hey, do I really need this wireless uplink? No, I don't need that. Let's disconnect that. Change, again, change one thing at a time. Are you keeping track of these changes? Then you want to make a list of things that you might want to change or disable, including some of the things you'll see on the forums, like if you're having an older version of the controller where it has an auto-optimize button, maybe maybe you don't want to have auto-optimize turned on, and then you can wait and see if that's going to solve my problem. One of the many things people talk about on the online forums is wireless uplink. This can cause issues. Now, wireless uplink is enabled by default in the site settings of the controller, and it would allow you to wirelessly adopt an access point that had power but does not have an Ethernet backbone cable. Now, this is required if you're running mesh, Unify mesh units, you have to have this enabled. But again, if you don't have mesh, you may want to turn this off. And the last one I have listed here is Spanning Tree. Spanning Tree is a layer 2 protocol that prevents network loops from forming by checking on the topology constantly to see if there is indeed a loop. If you have a link that goes out to a dead end, a dead end link where we don't have redundant topology, you may want to turn STP off. You may not need this. All right. Another thing that you can think about is separating your 2.4 and your 5 gigahertz networks into separate SSIDs or completely separate networks. You might be having a network problem. One of the most common things I see out there in the workplace is the power levels on 2.4 is generally too high making my cells way too high, leaving too many people on the access point, leading to saturation, leaving to the access point, stop responding to all of these clients. So again, 2.4 causes issues. We want to simplify things. One way you can do it is use band steering. Steer more clients to the 5 gigahertz network. In higher density deployments, you probably want to do this anyway. Go to the statistics menu. Look at the insights. How much traffic is that particular AP going to get been, been, been handling? And you could look at it over time. So again, you're going to kind of narrow your focus here. You're going to look into that actual AP if it is one AP. Simplify. If you think about common, uh, common problems that people are having, the more complex access point features you add to that AP, the more power in the CPU is going to be challenged on that device. You may not want all of these features, right? So let's go back and look at some more controller settings. Okay, I just wanted to drop back into the controller and just point out a few things that I had mentioned earlier. Uh, the number one thing right at the top of our screen here is time. What time zone is this site in, in my controller? And then you can see mine is UTC um, time, Los Angeles. So it's important to make sure that you always set this correctly, uh, that you always set the right time zone. Uh, sometimes that's overlooked. Now, I also mentioned wireless uplink here. If you scroll down a bit, you can see it under services here. Uplink connectivity. So if you did not need meshing, if you did not need that, I mean, a lot of people have said, hey, this solved my problem. This isn't something I, I would suspect, but it is something that you could you could change here. All right, obviously, there's, there's uh, reasons why you would not change it, but again, you might want to try that out. Now, and again, one other place that I mentioned before is, is DNS. So if we go into um, our network category here, and then under our wide area network here. And you can see that there is a place here that you can actually manually enter DNS server addresses here. So again, this depends on your particular network and how it's laid out. Uh, my particular network here is real small. I use a USG, uh, I haven't had any problems. So that's, that's, I just wanted to show you where these things actually are located at if you want to make these changes. And again, <laughs> power. Very simple, under devices. Again, here's my uh, AP that reports disconnected, but is not. And if I go down here to radio, and I can I can set my power level here. You can see that the transmit power currently set to auto. Well, I don't really need it on high. I'll just turn it on low. 
Right? So it, again, you may want to lower the power in your 2.4. This can cause issues. You, you may want to, to, to address that. So as I mentioned before, there is a troubleshooting chapter in the, in the book. It speaks to generalities, but it speaks to step-by-step -step processing as well. Troubleshooting is a step-by-step -step process. Eliminate, focus, narrow things down. This, is, this has been a common problem throughout many years that my access point disconnects. We have to, like I said, start with a step-by-step -step procedure. Is it affecting users? Is it not affecting users? And it could be many, many little little settings. Like I said, there's lots of settings now in the controller and lots of settings in the, in the access point itself that can lend to its own problems. Power levels, DNS settings, IP settings. There's a lot to parse through. I hope this has helped. It may have not helped everybody, but maybe it's helped a few people, and that's all I can hope for. Hope to see you soon and in class. Thanks very much.